Hello again. We've been invited to drummer Kenny Jones' home. Thanks for inviting us, Kenny. That's all right. Um, you've read a bit of Mad, Bad and Dangerous, the drummer's tales. Um, the Small Faces, The Faces, uh, The Who, The Jones Gang, and again, The Faces to come up. Um, and latterly, The Faces. Any of that Mad, Bad or even Dangerous? All of it. <laughs> Every single part of it, you know. Um, Small Faces was um, probably the best um, band ever for yeah. me. But, yeah, because it's the first one and we were all teenagers and it was, it was all very young. Uh, and it was the first entry into excitement, discovery, yeah. um, just sort of generating music and... Having you know, a good time. Studios, having a good time. Women. Yeah. Not a lot of drinking those days. Lots of drugs, but, <laughs> you know, no. You thought it'd be the other way around. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, great. it was fantastic. It was a great day. It's the most crea creative band yeah. I've ever been in or likely to, to, yeah. to be in, you know. So how was the faces after that? How did that sort of progress from that in terms of having fun or, or, or the music as well? Well, a lot of people, when, when, the, when Steve Marriott left the band, yeah. we were kind of, me, Ronnie and Mac were left there like in limbo. It was like mm. a divorce. It was like a, I'd lo we'd lost a brother or something like yeah. that because we were all so yeah. close. And it, it really did affect us. So. The Stones had a studio in Bermondsey, uh, which is a warehouse, basically, yeah. where they kept all their equipment. And downstairs they had a little um, uh, room, soundproof room. We used to go there once a week to, to rehearse, and not rehearse, but just jam, because we didn't know yeah. what to do, and just sort of enjoy each other, and that, and, or think about things. And, and that's when uh, we did that for a couple of weeks, yeah. and then one day Ronnie uh, Lane brought down his new neighbour, yeah. which is Ronnie Wood. Oh, yeah. And then... Woody came down and um, I remember meeting him in, in The Birds when he was in The English Birds, you know. Uh, and he was with the Jeff Beck band then on yeah. a wage. Uh, and he wanted to play guitar. He didn't want to play bass anymore. Because he was originally a bass player, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. He was an incredible bass player. Yeah. yeah. And um, so he's, uh, he started to play with us and we were just sort of jamming. Not, yeah. I didn't think anything more of it and that was that. And then literally the next week, um, Woody brought down his best mate, which was Rod Stewart. Rod, yeah. And uh, w Rod sat on the amps watching us and waiting for us to finish so, or have a break so we could go up the pub. Yeah. Went up the Bermondsey Arms in Bermondsey Street, where we spent most of, that was our, um, our, fame, our lovely yeah. place to go to, you know, it was just to get drunk yeah. and whatever. And, so, and we did quite a lot, actually, to be honest. And uh, so we got to know each other over a bottle or two. Yeah. And this went on for a few weeks and then, um, it was time to get serious, and then uh, everyone started to sing. Max started to sing, you know. Uh, Ronnie Lane had a great voice, you know. But all the time there was that missing yeah. link, you know. There was that missing, you know. After Steve Marriott with such a powerful voice, you know. Uh, and I kept looking at Rod over there on the amps, watching this. <laughs> and I think, hmm, something's going on here. And then one day I we we had a, we had a bit of a rehearsal, and then we went up the Bermondsey Arms yeah. and. Uh, I said to Rod, yeah, fancy a drink? And he went, yeah, great, okay. So we went round to the other bar. I said, do you fancy joining the band? And he went, oh, I said, do you think everyone, yeah, he said, would everyone sort of be okay with that? And I said, yeah, of course, you know. So uh, that evening we went uh, a party at Alvin Lee's place. And that's when I said to the others, I said, look, I've asked Rod to join the band. Oh, we don't want another prima donna Steve Marriott and all that <laughs> shit, oh, fuck. And I had to, it's got to set up after the night trying to convince everybody, you know, I won. You won. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I mean, the, I mean, I saw um, recently um, some good times on stage on a, on a video of, of you guys doing um, uh, I Know I'm Losing You. Losing You, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a yeah. bit where the guys are just coming back on after you're finishing your drum solo. Mm. And you can see Ronnie's there and Ronnie Lane's there mm. and uh, Ross Stewart's there and they're just... They're holding their guitars like this, this almost like guns, as if they're yeah, waiting to, right, to, to right. storm the stage again. <laughs> I know. But I did hear a story once, I don't know how true this is, that, um, that they used to go to a bar when you were doing your drum, your drum set. And they'd true. go and get drunk in the bar and they'd have, see how many mock fights <coughs> they could have yeah. each <laughs> night uh, uh, and how, how, uh, how long they could keep you playing. It happened once, and I think it was like uh, something like Finsbury Park Story or something daft like that, I can't yeah. remember. And uh, this drum solo, it was only supposed to be a drum break, not a drum solo. Oh. And it's, it's sort of got turned into a drum solo over the years, oh, you know. Yeah. Until one night they, um, they sort of started the solos and everything was fine, you know. And then I kept thinking, God, 
it's going on, it's 10 minutes now. <laughs> Right, and I think, so I'm sort of starting to get a bit tired. You know, where the fuck are they? You know, and then s <laughs> kept looking around the side. I couldn't see anyone. You know, of course you couldn't stop. No, no, I couldn't stop. It was, you know, in the end, I kind of, I did stop. Went fuck it. You know, that, that was it. <laughs> then I started again, and everyone. It was 20 minutes. They left me there. Really? Yeah, they went went round to the local pub, which was <laughs> on the corner of the backstage thing, and got drunk. <laughs> I got my own back though. You see, you did. Because when we um, this last Faces tour, we did. We started to do the drum solo, and every time we did it, I, get, I made it longer and longer and longer. <laughs> so I thought I'd let them fucking wait now. So, <laughs> until I got, I managed to get to about just under 20 minutes, yeah. and that was it. And then I. But even to the, I, I was looking at that drum solo the other day, and I thought, well, it, that drum, uh, that's one of my favourite ones because the whole thing still sounds like it's the drum solo for losing you, yeah. not just another drum solo, no, I know. which is why I like it. But the funny yeah. bit of that clip is because they're all waiting to come back on like this yeah. and you're still going. It's almost like you're playing a game with them and I know yeah. why, because yeah. there's, the, there's one bit where you say, right, this, I'm going to get it really, really obvious where you come Light in now. Light the shade, I so you go, <laughs> And you go right the way around, including the two floor toms as yeah. well, and, the, and, and that makes it absolutely, OK, guys, you can come back on because yeah. this is the yeah. biggest fill you're going to get. You yeah, know? that's right. Yeah. <laughs> like saying, come on. Yeah. And it, it cuts off just as Ronnie was going, because right. he's about to run back on the stage, they're all going to follow him on. Yeah. So that sort of sense of, <coughs> of fun is uh, sort of leads to another question. Was, was, are drummers a bit mad by nature, or do mad things happen to drummers? Or are we sane, the sanest people? No, 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 we're insane. Yeah. <laughs> totally insane, I think. I think we all got to screw loose in some sort of way, but then, you know, I'm pretty sensible, but mad at times. You know? <laughs> the thing about the uh, life with the faces and the small faces and whatever, and the who even, um, in terms of the fun you have around it, in terms of the boozing and all that sort of thing, yeah. um, did, you, did you find that you could do that and play the drums, especially in the tennis? Yes. You could. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could do that right from day dot yeah. until I started to get older. That's uh, the difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, people, I mean, I, it's, when, when you're younger, you can do anything. I mean, I used to, you know, I used to smoke cigarettes in those days, don't anymore, and, um, and drink. But yeah. I, ne I never really was a big drinker, and, um, but until I joined the Faces, or yeah. the Faces formed, and that was it. I was drinking brandy and Cokes every, yeah. you know, on stage before, yeah. before I went on stage, and yeah. we were like, like wobbly. <laughs> I mean, we could actually yeah. play together properly as a band when we were sober, yeah. which was hardly ever. So right. that was so it. You, so it was <laughs> sort of was a part of the course, really. Yeah, and I used to get you know drunk and God knows what. I don't know, but it was. Um, I, but you could handle it. I was young enough to handle it. Then yeah. after a while, it gets to you, you know. So when you get older, you just can't do it. Yeah. Like if I go on stage now, I don't drink. Yeah. But I do when I get off stage. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, that's that's, what, that's when the madness kind of, comes in. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say that's Sorry, when you yeah. tend to sort of. Uh, um, I've always been pretty tame, really. Not like Mooney. <laughs> no, I was going to say Mooney, um, a great player. Again, he kept it all within the confines of the song. Keith had a, a, like a built-in metronome. Yeah. And it, he went all over the place. He went in and out yeah. of time. Go, go, God knows where he went, but he went there. Yeah. And suddenly he'd come back yeah. straight. Almost away, straight like away. it was inevitable yeah. that he would. And it's, I just love his drumming. It's fantastic. You know? yeah. Only I, because, I mean, I was always a fan of... Keith anyway and we were great buddies in those days yeah. anyway like the who and the small faces and whatever and it was the penny only really dropped when I when I joined who and I had to physically play those songs yeah which are not easy to play I they're, would imagine not you know they're not just uh, some people can just copy yeah. them you can't copy them you have to put your heart and your life into it yeah your yeah. soul into it and that's the difference and that's when I thought, fuck, you know, I mean, he was a bit of ahead of his, ahead of his time in, in that respect. Yeah. I mean, he took a real risk by just going there all over yeah, the place. Yeah, I mean, if something comes to his head, he'd just do it. He, he wouldn't think. Yeah. You can't, you, you can't, not to, you, can't you, you must not think like a drummer when you play yeah. those songs. You've yeah. got to, you've just got to go, that's when you go, think a bit mad, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said to me that Keith Moon would do a wind up uh, properly. When Keith Moon did a wind up, he would leave no stone unturned to make it right. So if he was going to throw a telly out of a window, yeah. he would make sure he sent someone to get the necessary equipment to make sure it was broadcasting on its way down. So yeah. it had to be well, absolutely perfect. One night I was, we were in, uh, touring Australia and, we're, and we were in Melbourne. Yeah. I'll never forget it. And we were in this, the first big hotel they've ever built, which is the Hilton or something. And we were up on the, I don't know, the 20th floor or yeah. something. To, and I get a call from Mooney saying, fancy a drink? I says, yeah, come up to my room and we'll go to the bar. I said, OK, great. Well, go up to the, knock on the door, boom, open the door. Walk in and there's like 20 snare drums against the wall on the floor. 
I said, what the fuck do you need all them for? He said, uh, I said, what are you going to do with them? He went, oh, I'll show you what we're going to do with them. And so I went, fuck, picked one up and went, boom, and threw it out of the window, but the window was gl- closed. It yeah. smashed the glass, everything, straight through. And we ended up looking down onto the high street. And there this smashed up rolling snare drum was bouncing about 20 feet in the air, rolling up down the, the street. You could have killed someone. You know, so, so we both went, oh, fuck. Went to the bar as if nothing happened. I mean, I'm a hoarder of drums, so is Charlie Watts. So, I mean, I could fill out this whole yeah. barn with bloody drums. It's unbelievable. So Keith could have easily had 40 Oh, no, he did, yeah, lots of yeah. everything, yeah. I mean, he smashed them up every night, so he needed a new set of them. Yeah, smash this one up every night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a new one, isn't it? We're just building it at the moment, getting it ready to go on the road. Yeah. And you, as you say, you're going on the road, not this year, but next year with the faces. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. Yeah. Yeah, we all, there's a willingness for all to, I mean, with Rod this time. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, I mean, Nick Hartnell was fantastic. He was, it was great working with him when he yeah. stood in for Rod sort of thing. But he was, um, he, was, he said in his own words, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. And he really was. He was such a massive fan of the, the faces anyway. Yeah. Um, that he, he was just like, loved it, you know, yeah. and we loved it. He was a great singer, you know, and the great thing about that particular time was, or the, that tour is because he could sing the Ronnie Lane songs yeah. so well, because yeah. that's the style he's... I imagine he know. did Debris Love beautifully, oh, I'd have thought. Unbelievable. I'm going to see um, Ronnie Lane's Slim Chance on Thursday at, at the oh, yeah. Horns in Watford, yeah. yeah. Ronnie, what, Ronnie Lane's come back from the dead, is he? Well, he <laughs> <laughs> they do it so well, you, you, you know, blink and Yeah, you, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I love the Debris track, it's oh, such Debris. a big surprise. Better on the Debris, yeah. yeah. It's a lovely, lo- a really yeah. nice song. It's about his, gra- his, his, his dad, actually. Was it about yeah. his dad? His dad used to take him down to the Saturday morning market, oh, you yeah. know, and he was sorting through some odds and ends, you know, yeah. looking for a bargain, that's part of the lyric. Ah. So it's, it's great. It's very, Ronnie loved his dad, and his dad loved yeah. Ronnie, you know, and it was just... In terms of songwriting, did you ever do any with, with the faces at all, or, or did you arrange uh, stuff? Well, I them? never got a look in, because yeah. they were all so... Many songwriters in that band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, no, we'd, occasionally I did. And, yeah. Uh, the um, Ogden's Not Gone Flake, I remember humming yeah. that, yeah. which is the title track. Yeah. And I got that. So everyone wrote it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so that's, yeah, things like that. I mean, I started to write songs when we formed the, the Jones Gang. Yeah. Funny, and I really, really wrote some good songs on there. Gypsy Lane, which is about Ronnie Lane. Yeah. Robert Hart was a singer at the time. And I were going for an interview at uh, the BBC, yeah. and I found myself going up the road called Gypsy Lane. Yeah. And at the top of that is where Mark Boland died. Oh right, on the very top of there. So really so peculiar. So we kind of got chatting about it. And by the time we got to the BBC, we'd written You'd Gypsy written, Lane. Written Gypsy yeah. Lane. It's great. It's <laughs> pretty, pretty song. So do you have like little sort of um, mascots or things like the good luck things that you do or whatever? I, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I always say you, you, you can only play and only be as good as your drum tech. Ah, Not drum row yeah, as we yeah. used to, but you're only as good as those those guys because you know they're, you know, I've, luckily I've always had a good drum tech. Yes. You know. <laughs> Technician. Have you done? Have you have you have you ever done any um, teching before? Uh, no, I've never been a technician, tech. drumming <laughs> technician or somebody. What first inspired you to play the drums at all? Uh, banjos. Banjos. Yeah, because I um, I was cleaning the car when I was a kid. I was about twelve and. Uh, we were cleaning cars on, I don't know, Saturday mornings for pocket money, yeah. about half a crown yeah. in old money. <laughs> and so I, I looked up and the sponge hit me in the face and I went, fuck, what's that? And this friend of mine said, I think we should form a skiffle group. And the curiosity got me, so I threw the sponge back at him and said, what's a skiffle group? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, it's when you, you get a tea chest and you put a broom handle in one end, a bit of string on the other, put it to the corner and you plonk it like that he said that's a bass and he said then then you you get your um your mum's washing thing and then you get your your <laughs> nan's thimbles from a sewing kit on your ends of your fingers and you go like that on the on the washing board and i thought that's it he's fucking moving <laughs> he's gone mad it's you know mad. <laughs> he said there's there's a, there's a skiffle group on television tonight i think it might i don't know if it was a six five special or something like that um then lonnie donegan came on oh yeah and he was singing rock on the line and I think my old man's a dustman, stuff like that. Complete two extremes, one, you know. Yeah. But he was playing banjo, and I just fell in love with it. I just fell in love with the banjo. I thought, great, that's what I want to play, that's good. So I remember seeing a banjo in a pawn shop right next door to Bethnal Green Station. Yeah. 
So we went up the next day to, to, to buy this banjo, or get this banjo, with no money in our pockets. It didn't even enter our minds. We just wanted that banjo. That's how excited we were. Because you're kind of focused at that. Yeah, that's it. It's like, if you know you want to do something, you'll do it. Yeah. You know, it's like that. That was the attitude. And so we get there and the fucking banjo was gone. Mm. So we left the shop. I was really upset. We were walking back and my mate said, yeah, you, you really are upset, aren't you? I said, yeah, I was really looking forward to that banjo. He said, look, Tell you what, my mate's got a drum kit. Shall I get him to bring it over this afternoon? I said, okay. Turns up, exactly his mate banjo, turns up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> long way to a banjo. Turns up with this. Um, what, what was it? I didn't know what a drum kit. I mean, I knew what a drum kit was, but or how many, I didn't know how many drums it would have or anything. It was just a, a floor tom tom and, yeah. and, a, and a kind of bass drum with no pedal. Yeah. And one and a half sticks. It was one stick was broken. So I started playing one and a half sticks. And yeah. That's how I got into it. So I mean. That's an amazing term determination, even at that age, isn't it? So you, you, you don't get the banjo, yeah, but, but I, you get you have. I think to something must have been planted inside me because yeah. my my uncle was a, a band leader, but I, right behind him was all the snare, uh, about six side drummers, snare yeah. drummers. Yeah, yeah. And I was used to, from a very early age, pretend I was one of them and walk alongside walk them. Walk alongside and them. And I used to rush back to my yeah. dad's shed. Get the square biscuit tin, turn it upside down, two bits of firewood and play. I mean, there's, um, uh, there's this thing about um, drummers when they suddenly realise that they can play. Yeah. Did that happen with you? Was there a sort of a light bulb moment where you thought, I can do this? Not until, funny enough, I, I mean, I was addicted to drums. So when I got my first kit, I, um, I played. I, I was still at school, so I, I get up in the morning and play for yeah. an hour, right? And don't forget, I lived in a sort of terrace street, yeah. you know, it's like neighbours and whatever, and I drove everyone nuts. So I played for an hour, go to school, that was the only piece they got until lunchtime. He's come back, play all the way through lunch. Yeah. And then in the evening I played for, until someone dragged, tried to drag me off anyway, was, and I got really yeah. uptight. So I was just playing all that time. And I used to play, the only records I, we had in the house was uh, a couple of old 78s. One was the 12 Street Rag. Funny enough, it couldn't have been a better record really, because yeah. dude, laddle, dude, laddle. And it, so you, I started off with Swing, yeah. which was great. and. Um, and it really doesn't mean a thing if you haven't got that swing. Yes, you know, it's, it's, yes, uh, yes. It's Thanks very much indeed, Kenny. Um, tune in, folks, for the second part of this interview next week. Hi, I hope you enjoyed that first part of our interview with Kenny Jones. Uh, the next part should be up next week. To see any of our other videos, hit the More Videos button. And please remember always to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Are you lost? Are you like a lolly? <laughs> they told us not to come up here. <laughs> you call this the bar? I call it anything else. the studio? No, I just call it... I'm going over there. Home. <laughs> Home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's great. I've got a bar at one end and a... Uh, Kit of the other one. Yeah, it's great. What more can anyone want? Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. This is my hair, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where, where is this ball? Well? The heist. Yeah. It this is, is heist. my heist. <laughs> yeah. It is heist. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Is there uh, any props that you may want to use? Thanks, mate. Yeah, you haven't got. <laughs> yeah, you haven't got. A, I've got a truncheon. <laughs> a truncheon up the back there in case you ask me the wrong thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, Neil was my. Um, Drum tech oh, <laughs> many years ago. Yeah, oh my God. Um, I thought he was a pilot. Oh, was that as well? Yeah, that's, oh, right. <laughs> Astronaut. Astronaut. Oh, yeah. that's right. Neil Armstrong's <laughs> sitting over there. Yeah. My God.